Hi guys, it's Summers here, and today we've had the Ferrari SF90 brake cover, and as usual, there's plenty of us to dig through, so let's dive on in. The front wing is actually not that much of a surprise, as we've already started to see a trend emerge, with Sauber, sorry, Alfa Romeo, yep, I'm going to keep getting that wrong, and you probably will too, shaking their car down with the most aggressive of these droop-style wings. But it's also worth noting that Toro Rosso shook the STR14 down with a similar design, and whilst McLaren's render showed a rather flat flap on top, their physical launch car had one of these droop wings too. I'd say it was fairly obvious that we'd see divergence at the start of these new regulations, as the designers tried to find the best solution to fit with their overall design philosophy. Anyway, I'll cover the two groupings that these front wings have fallen into straight away in a separate video between now and the start of testing and try to better explain the function of each. However, in shorthand terms, Ferrari and the aforementioned teams have twisted and drooped the upper flaps as sort of a poor man's facsimile of how the old wings were designed, but obviously they can't express themselves with the same geometry due to the confines of the new regulations. However, as they now have some additional span to play with, given the wider wings for 2019, they can give up the outboard section in order that it interacts with the simpler kicked out end plate, the twin strakes that are underneath the wing, and the inner foot plate which is now exposed by the main plane being lifted on the leading edge. In the case of Ferrari, at the Y250 juncture, the team have returned to the arch design for the main plane and flaps, much like we've already seen from Mercedes, and this will influence the vortex that is shed from there. Ferrari actually used quite a large front brake duct in 2018, seeing as they used a blown axle, but obviously with this particular car the blown axle is no longer available to them, however the duct shown here is actually slightly larger by the looks of it, and that signals to me that the team are looking to blow airflow through the entire assembly en masse, or have some other tricks up their sleeve outside of the 105mm central diameter that they'll deploy to try and affect the aerodynamic weight created by the wheel rim and tyre. The nose, their wing pillars, the S duct and turning vanes are all pretty much carried over from 2018 at this stage, but I'd expect to see some of this hardware changed in the forthcoming weeks. Meanwhile, the vanity panel has a convex surface, creating ridges on the top of the chassis, which will help to guide the airflow both passing over the nose itself and also out of the S duct. Ferrari, much like Red Bull, have jumped on an idiosyncrasy of the regulations surrounding the bargeboard height, which allows the most forward elements to circumvent the new lower bounding height that the more rearward elements have to follow. Their effect is neutered slightly by their proximity to the chassis, but still, it's something that isn't really supposed to be possible, so it can't be harming performance. The forward elements of the side pod deflectors have also seen their height trimmed, as they're situated within the footprint of the bargeboard region from a side view. Meanwhile, the overall shape and philosophy of the bargeboards are almost identical to their predecessors, with more detailed changes likely to show up during testing. With almost the entire grid running a periscope side pod layout like the one pioneered by Ferrari in 2017, the team must feel fully validated and continue to refine their own version for 2019. Just as in 2018 the inlet covers the forward face and a portion of the upper surface of the side pod, only divided by the horizontal slat that guides airflow through and around the side pods. The side pod bodywork itself is a little bit more pronounced than some of the other challengers, but this comes in tandem with a slimmer engine cover above suggesting that the team have had a shift around internally. In line with this, the team has switched back to a trapezoid-shaped airbox inlet, having used a much larger oval-shaped one over the last couple of seasons. You'll note that there's a defined squared-off section of the engine cover that reaches back to the cooling outlet, where their pair of wastegate outlets have been placed on top of one another, just as they tested back in Germany last season. Above this we find a looped double-element T-wing, as the team attempt to claw some downforce from the two surfaces. The rear wing takes the straight end plate design they introduced in the latter stages of last season one step further, as the surface is divided up into six distinct sections, whilst three upwash strikes are utilised on the outside of the end plate above. The tail on the DRS actuator pod may appear a little odd at first, but it seems that all ideas that originate at Toro Rosso must be good ones, as they ran a similar solution last season. The tail presents a limiter for the top flap, ensuring it can't rotate too far when deployed, and allows them to push the mechanism harder, and also improve the aerodynamic performance of the wing when DRS is activated and when it closes. 
In general, the SF90 seems like a steady step forward on a concept that at times was already the best in field, with other teams needing to take a huge stride forward to get near their level. However, there are clearly areas of the car we're not seeing in 2019 specification, with updates likely to come thick and fast throughout the testing and the early part of the season. If you've enjoyed this analysis, then be sure to check back during testing and the season, as I'll help you to discover the changes that occur on the cars throughout. Don't forget to like the video, as that really helps me out, but also subscribe to the channel so you know when my content drops.